For many Nigerians, the major political parties must get it right in their selection of candidates in 2022. Otherwise, the 2023 elections will usher in a government that will further destroy whatever is left of the country. But for this to happen, so many elements will have to coalesce in the coming year, ranging from active civil society groups and a vociferous electorate to an independent electoral umpire that has the backing of the right legal and regulatory framework. To discuss the unfolding political landscape and what to expect from civil society organizations in the coming year, we're now being joined by a team of panelists comprising Achike Chude, Deputy Chairman of Joint Action Force with us here in Lagos, Ene Obi, Convener of the Civil Society Situation Room in Abuja, and Awa Musa Rafsanjani, Chairman, Transition Monitoring Group and Executive Director of the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, speaking to us from Kano. Good morning, lady and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. So I'm just going to jump right into the burning topic du jour, the president's failure to give his assent to the Electoral Amendment Act, and that ties into the introduction. His reasons, or excuses if you prefer, were around direct primaries and sort of the difficulties, the challenges with direct primaries and imposing direct primaries as the only option for political parties and whether or not that's tenable. I'd like your take on that. First yeah, well, you know, there are people who have um, also looked, uh, tried to look in between the lines and they want to, and uh, they feel that um, the direct primaries uh, was used as an excuse by the presidency uh, to throw away the baby with the bathwater. Uh, there are those who uh, feel that uh, the target of uh, the non-presidential ascent uh, had to do with, uh, the, uh, the, of course, uh, the initially controversial issue of um, uh, electronic uh, voting and uh, circulation and transmission. Uh, they feel that that is the target. Uh, because, I mean, the argument again has been made that uh, there is even uh, uh, provisions in the law allowing the either direct or indirect primaries. And so uh, you throw away a whole um, you know, electoral reform you know, package as presented to him by the National Assembly, and the, about, and the 12 reasons given uh, for doing that were based on a direct uh, primary. Uh, of course, um, uh, it, it is very, very clear uh, that uh, something needs to be done. And I think I liked the way you are opening when you were talking about uh, the absolute necessity of getting it right now because uh, the country finds itself at, at, uh, at a crossroads. And leadership has been uh, pointed out as uh, the bane of uh, the crisis in this country. And you get it right by making sure that you have the right electoral uh, you know, uh, system. Uh, you whip up uh, the people, uh, you whip up the patriotic favor you know, of uh, the people, and then with an active civil society. So a combination of all of this, I think, uh, would go a very, very long way in uh, getting the politicians uh, to uh, hopefully do the right thing, if not willingly, at least, I mean, reluctantly. But the most important thing is that the right thing is done. So we are absolutely not happy. We are shocked. And we hope that uh, when the, 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 uh, the National Assembly resumes, uh, that uh, they will put their amount, you know, their money where their amount is, uh, they have already done the, you know, the, the major thing, and that is to ensure that uh, some of these uh, amendments uh, that were also aided by uh, the activities of a lot of civil society organizations are uh, now passed, were passed to the, um, the presidency. So we would hope that uh, there will be, if the presidency does not change its mind, that uh, the National Assembly will go ahead to override uh, the, uh, the decision of the president not to give assent to the bill. Uh, if they so decide that uh, perhaps that the major issue could be uh, the direct primaries, then they will perhaps look their way around it so that all the other essential and crucial and pivotal elements of uh, the, uh, the bill uh, you know, uh, themselves would be preserved. Uh, that is what I, I think should happen. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that. I would quickly like to come to uh, Mr. Rafsanjani in Kano. Another part I would like to talk about is security situation and, you know, civil society. You wrote a letter, you know, to the DG of the DSS recently about a visit. Can you tell us more about that incident? Thank you very much and good morning, all. Um, well, first and foremost, 
we were really um, shocked and surprised that during public holiday, one offices uh, actually closed. Uh, one Monday was also declared a public holiday. Um, team of DSS would come to our office to demand to see some, you know, uh, personnel in the office. And um, for us, it is um, just reminding us that um, the attempt by those who are anti-civil society, who are anti-civil space, is um, getting, you know, more and more increased. So the repression, oppression, intimidation, and harassment of civil space um, is going to be in the increase in the 2022. This is simply because civil society are demanding for accountability, they are demanding for justice, they are demanding for you know um, uh, security sector reform, because nobody can just understand why you should come with HILOS, with the team of DSSS, to come to a civil society organization that is basically working towards strengthening our democrat democracy, demanding for responsible, responsible governance, rather than going to um, criminals and you know um, uh, bandits and uh, terrorists. You are now coming to civil society office claiming that you want to do profiling. So we are worried and concerned that 2022 is going to you know, come with additional repression, oppression, intimidation, and harassment of, of civil society groups. And this is not going to help democracy because if you silence civil society organizations simply for saying that do the right thing and demand for justice, accountability, and responsible leadership in the country, and if that is what you consider as their crime, then we will definitely go into a more serious problem because uh, the rule of law must be upheld because democracy is about rule of law. Democracy is about participation. Democracy is about freedom of expression. Democracy is about choice. Democracy is about inclusiveness. And if you, because civil society are demanding that, take a responsibility based on the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to secure the country, to ensure that the electoral reform is actually amended to give confidence, arrest to hope and confidence on the electorate. Because right now, Nigerians have no confidence in the electoral system because of the monumental rigging and because of the um, politician using uh, stolen money to finance political you know, activities in the country. And as they are already plotting and planning, you know, to scuttle credible, fair, or, you know, um, proper election in the country by ganging up against those reforms that will help to strengthen our electoral system. It is just simply sending you a message clear that come 2022, the political environment, the political corruption will continue to be you know, um, strengthened by those who are not willing to allow democracy to flourish in this country. And therefore we cannot hold our arms. Corruption must be put in a more honest, and sincere way. And the insecurity that we are facing in the country, which is created by also aid of corruption in this country, we insist it must be addressed. Injustice, which is you know at the root of many uh, problems in the country, must be addressed. And we've been addressing and advocating for uh, you know uh, judicial sector reform in the country because if there's no justice. Honestly speaking, you know, it would be an illusion to assume that you are even going to have even the peaceful 2023 um, election. And there are a lot of um, uh, ill preparedness by even both the political parties and the, you know, uh, political leaders in the country. Because a situation whereby you are having just, you know, accidental uh, leaders who, you know, got their way into the political parties by imposing themselves and declaring themselves winners against the wishes and aspirations of the voters, I think that is a serious and dangerous threat to democracy and good governance in Nigeria. So the, already the country is shrinking. The civil space is shrinking. The economic environment is also not looking very good. We just you know, um, uh, found ourselves in a very horrible you know, recess that is affecting and hitting Nigerians. So many taxes are being you know, created against the poor people. And those who are supposed to pay the taxes, you know, who are evading taxes, 
Nobody is doing anything to them. Right now, the money laundry and illicit financial flow in the country is getting out of hand. So civil society are saying that, look, we cannot continue this way. We must take proactive measures to reform electoral process because you, people, leaders came into power through in democracy through election. And if you are going to have a leaders uh, that will be more focused, that will be more pro poor, that will actually help to strengthen democracy and democratic institutions and deal with corruption, deal with insecurity, create economic you know, um, prosperity for the country, allow inclusiveness, then definitely you must take fundamental reforms in the country. And it is a loss of opportunity that, you know, we are even having conversation now on just one aspect, which is electoral reform. You know, if people are sincere, they should be looking and, in fact, working toward ensuring that, you know, they eliminate all those aspects in the electoral process that is making Nigerians not even have confidence or have you no know, hope or even participate in the electoral process. And for the president, it is really sad that he has been shouting that he was a victim of electoral fraud in Nigeria. Six years after, he has never sent one single bill to address electoral corruption in Nigeria. And now the, Senate, the National Assembly had several um, did the amendment and sent it to him. He simply ignored it. The last one before the 2019, he said simply because there was no time framework, that's why he did not uh, want to assent his signature. This time around, you still have more year, more times, and they did not do anything. And where were the executive when the public hearing were going on in the National Assembly? They all came, they participated, those areas that they are even objecting, you know, which is just, you know, um, not more than, you know, uh, 1% or 2% of the entire electoral act amendment that has happened. Why must you throw away everything? We wasted so much resources, we wasted so much time, so much intellect and so much energy, and only for you now to come with these plenty excuses. I think we have responsibility as patriotic, responsible Nigerians to tell the president, to tell whoever is behind stagnating electoral you know, uh, reform in Nigeria, to let them understand that Nigerians are determined to continue to advocate, to continue to insist that electoral reform must be carried out in order to ensure that electoral transparency happens in this country and to ensure that those who are using money, you know, using the security illegally to intimidate and harass legitimate voters, you know, this time around, Nigerians are not willing to allow that to happen. So transition monitoring group, civil society organization are determined to ensure that they continue to advocate and ask for the lawmakers to do the needful and also ask the president to ensure that he did not shame himself and shame the nation by allowing corruption in the electoral process. Political corruption is one of the major, right. you know, um, fundamental of corruption in Nigeria. So, and if the president is not seeing electoral reform or electoral corruption as a corruption, then that's a challenge. Uh, if I could just um, ask a question, direct a question to NAOB. What is your assessment of the civil space in Nigeria in view of what Mr. Rafsanjani even just said about that unwelcome visit from the DSS as a, an, a warning salvo, a, a sign of unpleasantness to come? I, I think, um, you know, the civil society has been overburdened, you know, the responsibility of the civil society or the responsibility of citizens is to be able to participate. You know, it's an obligation for you to be able to participate in the democratic process. And we are not being allowed to do the needful. I think the fact that Nigerians are clamoring for the, for the law, it means a lot of things. It means they have respect for law, for the rule of law. And what we want is for the rule of law to be allowed to exist. So if you have citizens who want to live by the rule, it means you're a very, very lucky leader. And this is a responsibility. We have a democracy that is so young. We have a democracy that we want to develop. And I think the elected leaders should be able to ask themselves, what exactly are you there for? What are you doing there? What is your own part? Yes, you have been chosen or you have been elected by you know, your communities to go and represent them. And you are representing them. So what are the duties of representation? 
And so call for us is the electoral amendment bill or that has been passed and, and gone to the president for assent. All of the excuses, you know, I think the year is ending with us in a very, very disappointed uh, 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 environment. I think there was a golden opportunity as we were closing the year. Golden opportunity for us to have that law. There are no excuses, no, you know, what are the excuses that you can really touch? Like Rav Sanjani mentioned, we, this law or this bill has been there for years. For how many times did the president refuse to assent to the bill? You know, once, you know, uh, uh, March 2018, uh, uh, September 2018, in December, again, you say, oh, now it is too late. It is too late for me because the, the 60 days rule, you know, has, has come and all of that. We don't believe in any of those things. You know, and we are amazed that the president did not assent to the, to the bill because we think we, it's our thought that the president is ready and waiting to cop the issues of corruption. Corruption is something that he, he started with and with the hope of his former life that you know, uh, issues of transparency and uh, accountability would be top on the agenda. And we just thought that this is one area that the president should be willing, that has a golden opportunity to participate in. Nobody can give us any excuses of um, um, is the direct primaries, there are still some issues. There are more than 400 parliamentarians that are engaged in this and they voted and passed, the, 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 and passed this bill in, in, in the parliament. We went through so much, the time that was wasted, the energy that was you know, wasted, and the, the man hours you can, if you want to calculate it, how can we do this to Nigerians? I think our leaders are failing us greatly. You know, and it's very, very unfortunate. We thought no matter what it is, at least you'll be able to pass the bill or to assent to the bill. Just like what happened during the, you know, the uh, 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 petroleum bill, which you, you assented to, and then you, t you sent it back you know, to the house. Which excuses are we going to give ourselves? You know, yes, it is, you know, the space is shrinking, but we are struggling. Are we supposed to, be, to struggle in order to make democracy work in Nigeria? Who are the parties? Ours is to hold them accountable to do the needful, the things they ought to do, let them do it. That's why we're working so hard. That's why we are, we are campaigning. That's why we are asking them, do they have to overwork us after we have chosen? We have elected you to a place to represent us. And now the civil society had to, you know, we cannot sleep because we want you to pass a law. You want you to, to ascend to the bill. And I, I think we give eventually give kudos to the National Assembly for passing the, the, the bill. And if they have done their duty, now another is coming back to the uh, National Assembly. We thought the National Assembly for once will be able to have, you know, the attitude to say, veto the president uh, 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 not assenting to the bill and let the, the law pass. Or is it, are you really tempting Nigerians, you know, let's not tempt Nigerians towards anarchy. We have a lot of problems on the on ground. We have a lot that is going on. This is a government that came into power and said refineries will work. Our refineries, gigantic edifice that are in places that can really take so many unemployed youth. We have our streets that are milling with the young people that have no jobs. So many of them could be taken into the refineries to serve their country, to create sustainability and reliability on the Nigerian product, which is a petroleum product. So you have, you know, the, the refineries sitting down doing nothing. So I think we are being overburdened, you know, and uh, it will be a failure of governance. We are going to be watching them as we go into the, in, into the new year. But we are very, very disappointed. And I, I am personally disappointed. When Nigerians are disappointed. The civil society situation room is very disappointed. I work also as a country director of Action Aid. We see poverty in the face more people, you know, more poverty in the land, more people falling below the poverty line, and all we are saying is give us the rule, you know, the law to live our lives. We are patriotic Nigerians. We want to stand by the rule. They elected you and said, oh, you know, um, arise, O oh, compatriot. We want to be able to arise. You, say, you pledge to Nigeria, your country. 
We pledge to, to Nigeria, our country. We are the we, the people. You are in them as well. So you don't pledge to, to, to Nigeria and not observe the rules. So a lot of them are guilty as charged for wasting our resources and man hours. You know, but we're looking out to the year. Right, thank you so much uh, for that chilling, chilling account you've given. Uh, I'd like to come to you, Achike. Uh, then what can we do? Because this is our democracy. This is the same democracy some people paid for with the supreme prize of their lives. And here it's been challenged again. Yeah, you know, um, the, uh, ironically, uh, the president is a beneficiary of um, electoral reforms that took place under Yaraudua, the wise uh, commission. Um, and he benefited, uh, he became president as a result of some of the reformations that took place. Uh, so he has climbed to the top of the ladder, and some would say he has uh, moved the ladder uh, so that uh, his successor does not enjoy from what uh, he enjoyed. The president has told us that he does not want to be disgraced by terrorists. He wants to leave a good legacy. Uh, he says that he's conscious of uh, the possible verdict of uh, history, and he wants to side, stand on the good side of history. Uh, so when he came into uh, uh, government as president, he wanted to change some of these indicators of uh, the well, failure of the PDP from what they told us. The economy has to be put in good shape. Corruption has to be fought and uh, destroyed or fought to a standstill. And then uh, I think the issue of uh, insecurity. Uh, we have seen where we are today when you talk about economic indicators. You're talking about uh, the, uh, the state of uh, unemployment in the country, which stands at around 42%. Uh, look at uh, the debt situation in the country. These are very major crises that a lot of people are, uh, are not looking at. Uh, they don't know how explosive some of these situations uh, could be uh, in the coming months and years ahead. And, and so um, I think one of the things, and then again, uh, you look at uh, the issue of electoral reform. Now, if there is anything that is left for this president, Whatever he is going to do in the next 16 months that are left for him, we don't think it will change the verdict of history. I don't think it will change the verdict of history. Because this miracle has not been done in six years. It's not likely to be going to be done in you know, 16 months. But he can't do something about this particular issue, which will stand him in good stead, stead in terms of you know, how history looks at him. And he's failing spectacularly. There are no two ways about it. It is beyond you know, uh, understanding. He had an opportunity in 2018. Three times this bill was brought to him. There were delays. And then at the very last minute, back to the National Assembly, they worked on it, brought it back to him until December in 2019. And then he now says, ah, it is too late. There's nothing we can do. But I promise Nigerians, I remember that statement, that with this electoral reform, we shall accomplish it when I come back second term. It has been presented to him, and he has once more, for whatever reason, turned it down. Now we all know that it's about a convergence of political thoughts responsible for what is going on. He had to submit uh, the bill, according to him, to some people within the party. The Attorney General, of course, he has made it clear where he stands uh, you know, on, this, on matters such as this. Uh, the governors also had to look at it. The governors, the APC governors that have an intrinsic interest in ensuring that the status quo remains so that they can continue to impose uh, certain uh, measures on the uh, you know, members of National Assembly. And you ask yourself, even the position of National Assembly, must, they must be praised. But why is it that they were so insistent of ensuring that even though uh, direct primaries and indirect primaries are both contained in the laws of the country, they understand the high-handedness of the governors in their various states. And it is important that you remove some of these overarching powers from the governors. Remember that in 1999, when we you know, moved into you know, uh, this present uh, democracy, so-called, I mean, unbroken democracy, that we are having problems across the country, across the states in the country. National Assembly members were thinking that their duty was to checkmate the executives in their states. But they were wrong. Because of the way the executives were able to move and mobilize against them, 
sometimes using talks, using security personnel and all that to emasculate the state national assembly, you know, state national assembly, talk about Toyo State, talk about, uh, you know, Anambra State and so many all over the country, uh, you know. So now this is what I think in my mind was the thinking of members of national assembly to take away the powers of these governors. And you see, in taking away the powers of the governors, there's a possibility of a greater check on the activities of these governors. But that obviously is not being allowed to happen by the president's refusal to assent to the bill. So, but we must say that the interest of Nigeria is beyond, is more, than, is more important than the interest of the president and the interest of members of National Assembly and the governors and all that. It's about when you talk about the Nigerian state, some people tend to have a misunderstanding of the state. The state is supposed to be an aggregation of all of those things that concern us as a people, regardless of geopolitical zone, regardless of every other thing that we can muster as citizens, is what sums up you know, the Nigerian state. But today, when you talk about the Nigerian state, people look at the Nigerian state as the will of the president of, of the country. There are times presidents have been known to act contrary and not in tandem with the interests of a people. That's why presidents, that's why you have constitutional provisions for presidents to be impeached or for governors to be impeached. Because the law, the, the, the constitution, you know, recognizes the fact that sometimes they might act in ways that are diametrically opposed to the overall interest of a country. So now we have a dilemma. And I think that what we need to do is to remind the president of the verdict of history, since it seems to be important to him. That, I mean, this is the only thing for me, for now, that I think the president can hold on to and say, well, I was able to do this. And it's so important. The issue of electronic voting, for instance, is exceedingly I was in Anambra State, and we, I mean, with the election, and we saw how some of these things are meant to work. We know how important it is. I mean, you can imagine a situation where, for instance, the a politician is empowered by, I mean, during the conduct of an election, to just pay some people some money and then disrupt voting in some places, take away the ballot box and nothing happens. But imagine a situation where that has been overridden by the, by the use of technology. As people are, are voting and these things have been inputted into the beavers and so on, the results are going somewhere else. So you send your talks to, <laughs> to remove the ballot you know, boxes and then you achieve nothing ultimately at the end of the day. So what does it mean? It saves the politicians a lot of money. You don't need to do, uh, to send it to higher talks to do your, you know, the job that you should have done in the campaign field. So that implies that the politician now realizing that they have limited role to play in distorting the process of an election will now have to do the work of selling themselves and their ideas to the people and for their votes. So these are so I think that civil society group should continue to put pressure on the president. Remind him that he's failing spectacularly at, at this level. And then even if we have to mobilize people on the streets, go to the National Assembly, put a lot of pressure. Civil society, just lastly, I know you, you know, I need to stop. Civil society have done so much. Even before this, this, this bill was presented uh, to the national, uh, uh, I mean, to the president, I know the series of engagements that uh, different civil society organizations had with senators, had with members of, of uh, the House of Representatives, telling them, you know, emphasizing the importance of making sure that this electoral reform goes through. And I think, in fairness to a lot of them, some of them also saw the need to do something about it. Unfortunately, the president seems to be pouring uh, cold water on uh, the whole of this efforts for now. Wow. Low hanging fruit dying on the vine. My question is for you, Mr. Raf Sanjani. Mr. Trude here has just outlined a plan of action. So, what are your thoughts on what to do next? And what are the options before Nigerian people should the National Assembly abdicate their responsibility to us, the electorate? So, Transition Monitoring Room, TMG, and of course, uh, many civil society organizations in Nigeria because of their nature and action and character, they are a non-violence group. So we will continue to use the legitimate and constitutional means to ensure that we have responsible reforms that can help transform the electoral system in a positive outlook, because uh, democracy must work in Nigeria. Democracy is not, cannot be you know, hijacked by those agents of anti-democracy. And civil society will continue to advocate, sensitize, mobilize, educate Nigerians, and show the leaders the implication of refusing to do the right thing. I think the president should remember that his tenure will soon finish, and it will be really disastrous 
uh, he will end up without really addressing those key fundamental issues he promised to do in this country. One of it is, of course, fighting corruption. Electoral fraud is also part of corruption. And if you are overlooking that and you do not want to do anything, you know, to ensure that you minimize and stop electoral fraud in Nigeria by ensuring that you have a legal framework that will eliminate or block those, you know, people who are using the lapses in our electoral system to perpetrate themselves, rig themselves in the you know, election and come into various offices to continue to perpetrate fraud, corruption, then that is a problem. So you are fighting corruption. If you don't look at electoral reform, if you don't look at electoral transparency, you are just doing one day dressing because there's no way you can fight corruption. One the uh, component of really fighting corruption, which is political corruption and political system and leadership, you know, is being you know uh, populated by crooks, criminals, and democratic forces who have used illicit financial money to buy up themselves, you know, intimidate um, the, 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 the everybody and come into leadership position. So therefore, the, you cannot expect any part against corruption. So that is why we insist that political corruption must be fought. And one of the ways to fight political corruption is to ensure that you have electoral transparency so that it can restore electoral integrity in the country. The second issue, what civil society will continue to do, will continue to monitor and observe all those people who are blocking reforms in this country and they will be part of the history of this country as people who have contributed negatively to bad governance in Nigeria. Civil society will want to continue to see that those people who are determined to draw us back, who are determined to perpetuate electoral corruption in Nigeria, we will ensure that Nigerians both born and unborn ones, they got to know about them. The third thing is that we will also continue to conscientize and mobilize Nigerians in their various constituency to you know, demand that their representative should act in favor of reform in the electoral system. We will also continue to work with the media to ensure that the media continue to uh, es you know, escalate this issue until when we are able to have a sound electoral reform that will help to ensure electoral system is strengthened in this country. Because when you don't have the legal basis, then it will be difficult for you to do anything. And that is why we are demanding for this. Another thing that you know, Transition Monitoring Group is going to do is to also ensure that um, we continue to appeal to the president because we are a non-violence group. We are not anti-government. We will continue to appeal to the president to appeal his conscience that, look, you say you are going to deal with the insecurity in this country. Everybody knows what is going on in this country. From every part of the country now is tense and difficult. You know, you cannot really move out. If the agents of the state are not harassing you, the criminals are harassing you. So, and you are not deploying that energy, that zeal. You are even demonstrating now or refusing to sign this electoral act to, you know, decisively deal with the issue of insecurity. In Abuja, Abuja is becoming even difficult to move around because of the insecurity. And every time government will say they have killed bandits, they have killed terrorists, they have killed Boko Haram, and their number is increasing rather than decreasing. So who is saying, are you saying the truth? Are our security really telling us the truth? Because if every time you are bringing out figures that you have killed, it means that the terrorist number is too much and that, you know, is overwhelming the state. And that, if that is the case, government should seek support from its ally, from other countries that they have allied with, so that we can crush this. Because even the 2023 can only happen when there is a peaceful environment. Unless it is the politicians that are masterminding all this. Otherwise, they should know, and it is in their interest to ensure that they ensure that we have a peaceful country. Thirdly, on the issues of the economy. Mr. President, look at what is going on in the country, economic-wise. There's more poverty going on in this country. And these are all critical issues that you say you are going to address. If the aids and your 
you know, um, government officials are not telling you the truth. Please listen to the non-state actors. They will tell you the truth and they will advise you on how to go about it. Don't think that we are antagonistic. No, we are not antagonistic. We just want our country to be working. We want our country to be transparent and accountable because everybody will feel comfortable, will feel happy. Cont our country is okay, being dead well. every now and then abroad. Okay, okay. Uh, well, thank you so much for that. Uh, and uh, just like I, we asked uh, both of them, uh, what should we do now? What should we do? What should be done now? Okay, I, I, I want to call on, uh, on Nigerians, all citizens, to get up and exercise their rights by holding government, the government to account in all of the things that they do. Transparency and accountability is a watchword. We must hold our leaders accountable. If you are not holding them accountable, they are going away with a lot of things they shouldn't be going away with. One of it, the, the very key at the moment is the insecurity around the country. And I worry about violence, the issues of gender-based violence. Women and girls are not living their life the way they should. Even as we speak, many more than 100 of the Chibok girls are still in captivity. Leah Shuaibu is still in captivity. There are so many girls that have been kidnapped. They count, keep counting the days. Some of them have been held for six months. Some of them for many more. How would you, as a parent, Behave when your child is being kidnapped and you are sitting at home. And how would you, as our leaders, our leaders are the parents of the country. President Muhammad Buhari is the father of the nation. What are you doing about insecurity? And insecurity will, of course, play around in, in, you know, in the new year. You know, it will play around into the elections. Violence against women and girls is going to go into the elections. You know, what were we doing to free citizens? What are we doing? We have all of the governors. They have security votes. What are they doing about security? Standing upright for Nigeria is what we are asking for. You need to stand upright for Nigeria, and it needs to start with our leaders. Citizens are trying to start up, uh, stand upright. We, on our own part as civil society organizations, are trying to organize. We are organizing to also play our role as we pledge to Nigeria, as we stand by the Constitution. The Constitution of Nigeria, what we are operating on, is the 1999 Constitution. The bills and the acts is to give light to certain acts, that they, uh, certain parts that are, there is a gap. And that's why we are talking of the bills and acts, in order to also help us to fight and stand upright for Nigeria. Are they all patriotic Nigerians? If you are a patriotic Nigerian, why are you looting and so on and so forth? Many of the governors that are in the House of Assembly, in the, in, the, in the parliament today, many of them have cases with the EFCC, with the ICPC. Many of them looted the treasury, the commonwealth of the nation. And we are still on ground. And we are asking and demanding that we don't even cause chaos, that anyone who has cases should answer to the law. And that is that the rule of law must take precedence. And the rule of law will guide every Nigerian. Why do people spend, you know, steal one naira and you send them to jail? Or 3,000, you send them to jail. And those who are looting billions are not sent to jail. They are walking and, and, and moving around freely. Because it is very, very important for, you, for, for, for the rule of law to be put as a change maker. And that's why we are standing. Many people who have retired, the governors are not paying their salaries. Many governors are not paying salaries. Kudos to, kudos to those who are paying salaries. The, their pensioners are not suffering, are not dying. We are having a situation where more than a, a half of Nigerians are living below the poverty line. We feel the pinch. We are Nigerians. Okay, Anna. How do you act when your daughter is raped? taken and raped and then, okay. you know, uh, comes home with pregnancy. Okay, Anna. Okay. They are in their thousands now. Okay, Anna. And so we are calling on the president. And, he, you know, we, this is a failure of a generation through so many, sh you know, shreds. Okay. Electoral okay. bill, voter apathy is a big issue. They can only do this when they are sure okay. about what is coming to them.
All right. And so we need to, we are asking our leaders and demanding accountability and Thank service to, from them. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, it's a collective demand for accountability and doing what is right by the people. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, uh, Raf Sanjani. Thank you so much, Anna. And thank you so much, uh, uh, Chile, here in the studio with us.